The Republican Party presents a united front following the bitterly contested 25th Republican National Convention, which saw General Eisenhower win over Senator Taft on the first ballot, 845 to 280. The two chief rivals clasp hands in a symbol of party harmony after the senator's announcement that he relinquishes presidential aspirations. A tumultuous convention greets the nomination of the general who has become Mr. Eisenhower following his resignation from the army. A second ovation follows when Senator Noland of California pays tribute to the vice presidential nominee. And I wish to say to you that I know of no person who could have been selected for this high position and high honor by the Republican Party of the nation than my junior colleague, Senator Richard Nixon of California. Mike's running mate is probably the youngest vice presidential candidate in history. Senator Richard Nixon is only 39. The vice presidential nominee, who was the nemesis of Alger Hiss, receives the accolade supreme from his attractive wife. Twelve hundred delegates, once divided, cheered to the echo the convention's choice. As he once conducted a crusade in Europe, he now stands on the eve of a political crusade on the home front. The excited convention awaits the official acceptance speech of the man who promises to lead the new crusade. Ladies and gentlemen, you have summoned me on behalf of millions of your fellow Americans to lead a great crusade for freedom in America and freedom in the world. I know something of the solemn responsibility of leading a crusade. I have led one. I... I take up this task, therefore, in the spirit of deep obligation, mindful of its burdens and of its decisive importance. I accept your summons. I will lead this crusade. Republican hopes soar with the nomination of their two new standard bearers. <laughs>